if you ever thought Bitcoin wasn't a real deal, when the United States Treasury Department releases a 350-page document, that is validation. Okay, They're not doing this because they're going to shut it down. No chance. They're doing this because they're regulating it. They're regulating it because they like it. They don't regulate shit they like. They prohibit it, right? Prohibition, right? Yeah, I mean, so, um, you know, and I'm not trying to talk so much about Node for it. Well, I am, but because that's what we all share in common in part. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is, wow, all the professionals around this field now are going, okay, Bitcoin's a deal. Until, until all this was in place, Bitcoin was really a problem. Now it's like, okay, we know everything we need to know. Re really, we have 99% of everything we need to know about the regulations and the policies here. It's pretty clear now. So it makes, to me, this is when you invest in the space. You invest when, oh, there's not much more to add here. Now the question is going to be who can actually deliver the goods? So it's to me, it's an exciting time for the crypto industry because you're getting validation from every angle. Card One Venture CEO Gary Cardone believes that if you ever doubted Bitcoin's legitimacy, the recent 350-page document released by the U.S. Treasury Department should change your mind. This document isn't about shutting Bitcoin down. It's about regulating it. And when the government regulates something, it means they recognize its importance and want to oversee it rather than ban it. Cardone points out that now, with most of the necessary regulations and policies in place, Bitcoin is being taken seriously by professionals. This means the industry is gaining more validation and stability. For investors, it's a good time to get involved because the uncertainty is mostly resolved. Overall, Cardone is excited about the future of the crypto industry due to this new level of official recognition and regulation. Let us now view clips of Gary Cardone as he explains his latest outlook on Bitcoin. Give this video a like to show your support and subscribe for your daily dose of crypto news. We hope you enjoy. Before we continue with the rest of the video, do check out daily 5-minute crypto newsletter with all the latest crypto and Bitcoin news. It's a fantastic analysis of on-chain crypto data and breakdowns, and the best part is it's absolutely free. They'll cover expert predictions, breakdowns of on-chain crypto data, and any breaking news you need to know, all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description and enter your email to join over 50,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. Imagine Gary Daly having 10 Bitcoin in 10 years and he acts, he dies in a train accident. And uh, now he's in Dubai and an English citizen. So maybe this doesn't really impact him so much. But imagine it's me. I'm in the United States. I leave a thousand Bitcoin for my children uh, that I bought from 2016 to 2036. 20 years of Bitcoin movements, purchases. First question the U.S. government is going to go is, tell us, child, where did your money, dad's money originally come from? They're going to go, uh, we have no idea. Well, how would we know? It's 20 years ago. Well, I, I, yeah, I have no 40. Let me tell you, this came from this bank account. This money from this bank account came from this income stream that I've already paid taxes on. Thank you very much. And then this is the story of how all these coins moved over their life 20, 30 years. You have a storybook now. Okay. So in your seed phrases and in your cold storage, you also have a little piece of software called Node 40 that anyone can access. And they can go and, hey, give me a history of this. But why wouldn't you want to have that? Like you have it on everything else but you don't have it on your digital assets. So this is, uh, anyway, I'm really excited to have you guys as shareholders. I think it takes someone that owns this, owns a cryptocurrency to understand the complexity of it. I literally just got off the phone with one of the top six forensic audit accounting firms in the world. And they're now starting to reach out to me going, hey, I, you know, my firm's not moving fast enough, man. I think I think we should. I've been saying this for a long time. You're going to start to see major players in that field jump ship and either open their own firms or come work for a guy like me and go, hey, let's just go build a digital expertise division. No one's going to do this clearly because their cultures 
like HR will be in there. Okay. There'll be head of sales and there'll be the computer IT guy that runs XYZ software division. Gary's going, Oh yeah, this shit happened. The, the culture, the, the, the infighting and political infighting for a massive firm with 800,000 employees. See, people don't understand how large some of these employees are. Employers are like one firm. I, I had dinner the other night with a major, let's call it a top 10 forensic firm. Uh, his job is head of transformation for the entire company. I said, oh, really? Did How many staff are there? 800,000. How do you get 800,000 people to shift from analog to digital? This is totally different, dude. This is literally like taking the Flintstones 8,000 ton stone car, you know, Fred Flintstone, that car he used to have, and stick it on the L.A. freeway in, in, in prime time. All right, let's roll. Okay, literally, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to take this big, heavy analog engine and slam it into the digital world. Literally on the call, that's why I was late here. They were like, well, we're going to use some of our tools. I'm like, you know, you, you don't use any of the tools. Dude. It all gets built brand new. A week ago, I was in uh, Wyoming with uh, the head of Solana, Raj. He's in a he's in, speaking to about two hundred people. He's with Scaramucci, just two of the guys on the on the uh, on the stage, and he was like, "These people are thinking ten years forward. Dude. There's no more. Hey, what's Bitcoin going to do tomorrow morning? Not one person in two and a half days talked about price. They all talked about." It. What are we building for year four, year eight, year 12? Gary Cardone notes that if you leave behind a significant amount of Bitcoin, proving its origin can be tricky. For example, if you pass away and leave Bitcoin to your heirs, they need to be able to show where the money originally came from. Keeping detailed records of transactions and sources is crucial. He suggests using tools to track and verify the history of your Bitcoin, similar to how you keep records for other assets. Daily also highlights the growing need for digital expertise in accounting and forensic firms to manage and understand cryptocurrency better. Now, here are more clips of Gary Cardone. Two years ago, the Bitcoin industry was like, hey, we're going to get regulations. Hey, how are we going to cover our ass? Hey, what's going to happen next quarter? Now they're like four years, eight years. The guy, Raj, very bright guy. He said, if it doesn't get built all brand new, it won't survive. And Scaramucci just looked at me. I was sitting in the front row. Scaramucci looked at me like, hmm, because I have been telling him this for three years. I'm like, none of this survives, man. And it's hilarious. I see so many of these players, and they're like, yeah, I like Node 40 is good. I like you guys, but I'm going to go invest in some tokens. Or I can put $50 million to work in this other business. I don't want to do 10. I'm like, wow. This world is bizarre, dude. I can build a billion dollar business on twenty million dollars, and everybody wants to raise three hundred. It's like, why? Why? I don't need three hundred, man. And the investors want to put three hundred to work. So, which really should bode well for Bitcoin. I mean, what am I saying? Wow, people don't want to buy a twenty x from with a veteran who's never had a failed business. They don't want to buy that. They want to buy a node. Or they want to buy a token by a guy that's 22 years old. Never had any experience building one of these. There's absolutely about that much chance that I'm going to meet some redhead on a Saturday night that's going to destroy the business. But with a 23-year-old, uh, like you can have the best business in the world, dude. If the CEO is 23 or 25 and she, he runs into the wrong chick, Dude, that business suffers, right? Because she, he, he's young. I mean, uh, there's mistakes that people make that have nothing to do with the business. Um, so I just find this really, really fascinating. There is so much money that's wanting to be put put to work that ten and twenty million no longer attracts sophisticated investors into really safe uh, deals with veterans. Um, that says to me that everyone's chasing alpha. And I think 
you know, they're going to miss a lot of these really beautiful businesses that are so low risk uh, related to the upside they have. I see Node 40 is having very similar upside as Bitcoin um, relative to what your risk factor is, right? You know, income, positions on crypto and taxation, right? These are, uh, you know, remember, you don't pay taxes on crypto unless you sold it. So the amount of information that you start thinking in macro terms, uh, big data. Uh, imagine if we were to, there's only one, two companies focused on the very top of the food chain. It's us and another player. And they're pretty much, uh, they've raised $150 million. We've raised eight. Um, they've done a very good job. The problem is, um they're capped out they can't take any more business this is what i've been saying for a long time i'm like oh wow we have 10 competitors they could all get yes they could all fill their bags up with great business and we're still only going to cover 30 percent of the, the needs max 30 percent, man like th this is an addressable market problem this is why i go to the 1099s it goes from four to 12 billion Dude, this is not going from four to 12. It's going from four billion, which is already a fucking problem. And it's a commodity. It would get paid hardly any money. Now there's another 12 million. Well, who's going to want to do those? And the people that, and you have to do them. So there, every firm's going to be stressed to do those. This only, like, this is less than 1% of the entire global market, man. What, what happens when we have Van Eck? Have you guys heard this news? Van Eck, Van Eck, uh, they're a large crypto player, but nobody had a clue how large their position was. 30% plus is allocated to Bitcoin. Plus 30. I'm 86, man. Okay. Six months ago, we were all sitting here going, whoa, the whole world's going to change. 1% of the market's going to move into Bitcoin. Van X at 30 plus, man. Okay. What if it's seven, 10? We were like literally jacked up going, whoa, 1%. 1% is $8 trillion. 1% is an $8 trillion Bitcoin, right? $8 trillion market cap. $800 trillion total assets in the world. I think actually there's more assets than that, but let's still use $800 trillion. 1%, that's $8 trillion. At 5%, it's 40. Okay, that's where I think that we're going. We're going the next 18 months. I think 18 to 24 months, we'll be at a $3 trillion market cap. Gary Cardone talks about Vanek, a company with a large Bitcoin position, affecting around 30% of the market. Cardone predicts that if more global assets were invested in Bitcoin, its market cap could grow significantly. He estimates that Bitcoin could reach a $3 trillion market cap within the next 18 to 24 months. What about you? What do you think about the future of Bitcoin and its potential market impact? Share your thoughts in the comments section below and continue the discussion. If you found value in this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more insightful discussions on cryptocurrency and finance. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you again. For more Daily Dose Crypto News, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.